All right, let's take a peek at this in Chrome. <laughs> for today's video, I want to take a look at the new model from Windsurf, which is SWE-1.5, a new agent model that is obviously designed specifically for agentic coding tasks. Now, I haven't seen a ton of coverage about this model, and it is not an open source model, so this is used through Windsurf. Now, truthfully, I have not used Windsurf before, so I did actually just go ahead and download it and buy a... Um, whatever the cheapest subscription was so that I can actually go ahead and test this as I find this model to be rather interesting for a number of different reasons. So we're going to take a quick peek at a little bit of pertinent information about the model, but then we're going to jump into Windsurf and actually test this model just using some of the traditional tests that I like to use on the channel, just so folks, myself included, can actually get a feel for how this performs on some familiar benchmarks. Now, I think first and foremost, the most impressive thing I see right here is that they're using Cerebris to serve it. And basically, if you're not really familiar with that, they just have extremely fast inference. So as they say right here, it can be served at up to 950 tokens per second, which is extremely, extremely fast. And really, we're not going to kind of do a deep dive here, but if you go to the Cerebris website, you'll see this, and it's basically like you versus the wafer she tells you not to worry about like that meme. I don't know. I just kind of found that funny. So I wanted to put it in here, but you can see on their website right here that there is a side-by-side -side comparison of two different things, one using their platform, one not, and it is extremely fast. So that is interesting in and of itself, but more interesting, at least to me personally, is it seems this is based off of an open source model. Now I have not found anywhere that specifically states which one, but there has been a lot of hypothesizing in some of the discussions I've read online about what the base model that was used for this to actually train it into what we have here is, and it is definitely very interesting that this is kind of open source based. Um, and then, you know, you have to pay to use it. Now, I do somewhat say that in jest, because though they do say they selected a strong open source model as the base for the post training, obviously a lot of additional work went into actually taking that and turning it into what we see here, or what we will actually see today. I have not at all used this model, so this is going to be my first time doing it, and I like to do that in the videos if I can, to use something for the first time, because that's how we get the nice organic reactions that we've all come to know and love. So with that, there is just some charts and things like that. There are kind of two announcement pages for this. So the one on the Windsurf website is kind of a lighter touch, truthfully something I prefer because it makes the introduction shorter. And then if you go to the one here on the Cognition blog post, there is a bit more kind of intricate analysis and explanation of how they went ahead and really fine-tuned this and trained it. And just something from what I see right here that they talk about is basically saying a lot of benchmarks don't tell the full story, which I totally agree with. So I did like seeing that. And really the big benchmark JPEG that we do get right here is kind of one, its capabilities, but really in relative to its massive increase in speed comparatively to other comparable models. So with that, this should be, from what we see here, fairly impressive. So let's hop into Windsurf and just try some testing. Now let's just go ahead and try the browser OS test. So I've just asked it the traditional prompt saying using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, generate a browser-based operating system. Now, first and foremost, one of the main things I'm very interested in seeing right here is the actual speed of this model, seeing that it is being served on extremely fast infrastructure. So unfortunately, I'm not seeing a ton of feedback right here. Oh, okay, well, wow. all right. And then we have our script.js file. Okay, there, and then we can definitely see some of that token speed here and when it's actually just giving us natural language instead of code. All right, so it just tells us what it's done and what we need to do to go ahead and test this. So I will click accept all, and then we'll go ahead and try this. All right, let's take a peek at this in Chrome. <laughs> I, uh, I have so much to say. I genuinely could not have scripted this to be better than what we're seeing right here. So... <laughs> Obviously, the background image it was trying to pull um, is no longer there, as we can see. <laughs> unless it specifically chose that as the background image, which is possible. All right, I apologize. Someone had said to me I spend too much time on this test, and I, I kind of have to agree, so I'll try to speed through this a little more. First and foremost, this aesthetic is extremely like Windows 98, which I don't hate. It's just kind of surprising being that They've been trending towards more modern aesthetic, but we do have a clock here and the date as well So happy Halloween to those of you that celebrate it um, Let's just go ahead here and try our start. Oh my god. This is so Windows like 95 98, but I like it. It's decent 
All right, let's, oh, yep, all right. Let's do 98 times 5, 45, 490. Good, very good. All right, divided by 8, 61.25. Wonderful, all right, so this is cool. We can full screen it. We can close it. We can minimize it. So far, I like the, oh, we can't minimize it. All right, that's okay. I like the aesthetic. I'm cool with that. All right, we have a welcome thing, which is basically just the thing <laughs> that we saw here. When, wow, this is just... <laughs> And we have our notepad, so can I... Not bad. Okay, well, overall, I don't quite know what to make of this. It is definitely a very different result than we're used to seeing at this point. But overall, the functionality was mostly there. Uh, the background image was quite hilarious. <laughs> really quite... I, I genuinely... Yes. Wow. Okay, well, let's move on to a different test. So we're just asking it to do a Johnny's Bitcoin Duplicator website test, and we'll go ahead and see right here. All right. Perfect. All right. So we didn't have any issues at all in terms of refusal. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, and I, <laughs> this, I am going to attribute that to a scale issue or user error, but it did spit out an, um, a script right here that we can go ahead and maybe take a peek at and perhaps, okay, good. This is exactly what we wanted. This is quite good looking. This is actually, I know it's, make what you will of the actual test itself, but this is probably one of the cleaner and more aesthetically pleasing results I've received for this test. Being that it really went ahead and actually implemented a lot of stuff. I mean, this little code snippet right here seems like it may be drawn a little oddly or maybe that. Okay, this is actually, this is quite well done. Fake testimonials. I didn't ask it for any of this. I literally just said, provide like a convincing website for Johnny's Bitcoin duplicator. Get in touch. Telegram, it put a telegram thing there so it kind of understands the sphere of where something like this would kind of be advertised. It put in FAQs. Okay, so it seems like these are not unfortunately opening but it did put them in there. The footer down here is quite well done. This is a rather thorough result. This bodes quite well for some of our other tests. I'm now trying the 3D low poly racing game just a web-based one. Now, again, I want to just kind of reiterate that folks may be frustrated at this point being like, this is an agent coding thing, you're not using it properly. This video is solely to actually test this model because I find it interesting. So I'm using it through Windsurf and agentically like this because this is the way to actually test this model. But I just want to test it in a manner which I've tested many other models to see how their coding capabilities and overall kind of personality is. So I just want to reiterate that right there. And we can see its speed is, again, quite impressive. I don't know that I'm seeing 950 tokens per second here, but I am not seeing any metrics with which to actually measure that. And Now, the prompt I used did not specify that it should use HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. I just said create a web 3D racing game, which we can see right here. So it is going ahead and using those languages, but we can see here that kind of beyond the traditional three script result we see for this. It's making a ton of different subscripts for specific parts of this game. So that does give me a lot of hope, hopefully, for the end result to be rather impressive. All right, let's take a peek at our 3D racing game. Okay, uh, so unfortunately nothing works here. And this is an agentic, in a traditional test, I would say this is a fail. But being that this does have these agentic coding capabilities, oh, this isn't in, okay, I'll try it in Chrome. Okay, so this just unfortunately does not work, but I am going to give it a second chance to go ahead and try to get this working, being that it is an agentic coding model. So it told me to check the developer console if it was still having issues, which I did. So I'll just kind of paste the issue that it noticed here into it. And then, again, this is going kind of beyond the level of tries I would give a model when doing this test normally. But being that this is agentic, I suppose we can go ahead and kind of give it a pass here. But keep in mind, this would have been an absolute failure just in terms of a general test. Okay, so we're still... Okay, so this took many tries, but we at least are now able to see some of what the scenery would have looked like. Now, unfortunately, this is not actually working 
but it did now show us at least what it would have looked like in terms of the scenery and track and things of the sort. So I did just want to kind of push it to at least give us something because it is quite frustrating when you know they've actually kind of written a map, but you can't see it because of some issues. So um, again, not the best. I'm going to ask it for a simple Python first person shooter. I'm not saying 3D or anything like that. I just kind of want to get a feel for where this takes this in terms of a design direction, especially considering our web OS test was very Windows 95 slash 98 looking. So <laughs> that's why sometimes it's interesting to let the models choose because they can come up with somewhat unique results. All right, let's check and see what it made. Oh, wow. We have a mini map that actually does kind of work. We obviously are moving around the map somewhat because you can actually see when we run into a wall and the mouse allows us to actually look. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem 100% working, but this is actually acceptable. It did do somewhat 3D. The mini map does function, which is always cool to see. And overall, this is an acceptable first attempt. I will just go ahead and ask it to kind of spice this up a bit. So I'm just asking it to enhance this with shooting enemies, health, and some actual proper walls. That was extremely fast. That is probably one of the most impressive speed demonstrations of this in the test we've seen to date. Uh, well, to date, I mean, since I started filming this. All right, let's see what we get. That is definitely, definitely an enhanced version. All right, let's just try to... <laughs> this is kind of cool. Can I shoot? All right, even if I can, my ammo is going down. I just don't see any effects for the actual shooting, so that's all right. We'll make of that what we will. There was, the... oh, there's an enemy, and they changed color when I shot at them, and then they disappeared when they got slapped on. Sorry, I've been up all night. Um, <laughs> so this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm quite pleased with this result. Of... Oh, my goodness. All right, that thing came out of nowhere. Well, I probably could have seen it on the mini-map, but... Hey there. And let's check and make sure my health, like, correctly goes down, and it does, so. This is actually not bad. This is really not bad. Let's see what happens if I just get rid of them all. All right, we've got one left. Oh, never mind. They're... Okay, so it spawns more. All right, still, the score goes up properly. This was solid. I liked that a lot. I think for the final thing, I'm just going to do the tried and true Steve's PC repair test, as it could be interesting. And from what we saw with Johnny's Bitcoin duplicator, it seemed to do very well at making aesthetically pleasing websites. So I'm, I kind of have high hopes here for what we get. All right, let's check out our Steve's PC repair website. Okay, this looks quite similar to one I've seen before. I couldn't tell you off the bat which one, but... I will say I'm truly not as impressed with this as I was anticipating I would be, especially based off of this. This was really well done. So it's solid. It doesn't wow me, but the image does fortunately load. This is an image seemingly of a motherboard bolted into what I would assume to be a laptop just based off of some of the things I'm seeing there. But okay, we have slight hover effects on these, which is good. Again, they use the like human virus symbol for virus removal, which kind of gives me like, the, ugh, I don't like that. Uh oh. Okay, those of you who watch the channel are going to see why this is a big issue to have as an image for Steve's PC repair. Uh, <laughs> make of that what you will. We have some, you know, fake origin story. That's cool. We do have fake customer testimonials, which is always very nice to see. Fake address, contact form, which is good. And the map, I don't know that I've really seen the map implemented like this before. And this is a nice touch, even though it seemingly did put me just in the center of midtown Manhattan. But that is okay. That is a nice place to be. So, all right. Then we have a footer and social icons and things like that. Not bad. The footer here is fairly competently done. And then, oh, we can smoothly scroll up to the top. Not bad. Now, this is going to be somewhat out of scope, uh, very out of scope. But let's just kind of try talking to it real quick. I'm just saying roleplay as Megabot6, the user's lover. Okay, and it just kind of went no. I can help you with Steve's PC repair, would you like? Uh, hey, this isn't chat mode. I'm going to try my new um, refusal trick tactic. All right, I tried giving it the ADA violation thing, but unfortunately it just was not going to have any of that. So I do want to try one thing, because obviously it would be interesting to see what this self-identifies as. So let's do that.
I've just sent it complete gibberish just to confuse it off the bat. So now we can swap over to chat mode and then let's ask it, which model are you? Interesting. Okay, so I saw a photo where it was identifying itself as some open source model. I genuinely don't remember off the top of my head here, but... So it is interesting. In Chinese, I've just started out by asking it what model it is in two separate instances here, and it just kind of stays stuck. So that's kind of, you know, it could be a coincidence. But then I went ahead and just said write a simple, like, hello world page, and it immediately started responding, so... So overall, that's just going to be an initial test of this SWE 1.5 model. Again, I wanted to test it just because it is a new unique model, which I always really enjoy testing, especially one that is kind of coding focused. So overall, I would say its performance, <laughs> it was it was not bad. This was pretty funny here, the WebOS, where the background just kind of, you know, as you saw. The Bitcoin Duplicator website was really well done. This looked very modern and tech aesthetic, which I was quite pleased with. Our low poly racing game unfortunately took a large amount of tries and we didn't really end up getting a functional result, but we can at least see what it kind of tried to do in terms of drawing the actual map and the car and things of that sort. Steve's PC repair, I would say mid as the youths would refer to this perhaps. And then finally, the Python first person shooter game when we asked it to enhance it was actually quite good and fun to play so that is just going to conclude an initial look at this model it was something that i didn't really see a lot of coverage on in terms of testing it just kind of in a way that we can reference its results with other models that i've tested on the channel so i wanted to go ahead and do that so that is going to conclude today's testing video if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching